Hi guys and welcome to another video. In last video I said I would be doing like a screenshot practice, screenshot study actually, and here we are, had my promise. Uh, the screenshot is from Final Fantasy 15. If I am correct, would be kind of embarrassing if I wasn't. And I have not played the game, nor have I watched a walkthrough, which is usually something I do if I find a game interesting, because why would you play a game if you can watch someone else play the game, am I right? No, really, I just don't have, like, consoles. I'm a, I'm a poor person. I have no nice things. Um, but yeah, decided to do a uh, screenshot study of this because I feel like I've seen um, cutscenes. Yes, those are called cutscenes. Um, and several screenshots of Final Fantasy XV and I actually find the game to be gorgeous, like the art direction is just so good, it's just like all the colors are, and it has like so many beautiful scenes, like damn, I, I, I probably want to do like maybe later on another study of these screenshots just because they look so damn nice. Um, though this is not going to be an exact copy of the screenshot, it's actually going to be very very different. It's kind of like, you know, when Twitter had those, if you use Twitter, it had those um, draw this screenshot in your style challenge. So this is kind of like that, but also study at the same time. So I'm just kind of combining, combining the two and doing this my way, taking some liberties, changing some things. Um, but the main thing is just like get the colors, um, you know, get, get the feel, sort of correctly. Maybe. Not even. <laughs> anyway, it's not gonna be an exact copy. I just kind of took a di direction from the original screenshot and then I just kind of went from there and did my own thing. Um, and I really liked it actually. I feel like I want to do, or I do want to do, more studies of, of different screenshots but also like studies of, of other artists' works because I've never done that and I feel like it would really benefit me if I did. So that's on my uh, list of plans. I th This screenshot has been kind of good for me uh, for another reason that... What did I even say just now? <laughs> uh, but anyway, th this screenshot study was good because <laughs> my cat is on my table and I don't want to yell him. Okay, good. Uh, now he came off of the table where he's where he was never supposed to be to begin with. Um, <laughs> but yeah, th this screenshot study was really good because I've kind of been trying to uh, get rid of, of like my artistic ego which can really hold you down um, if you hold on to it you know tell them from experience where you know when we're kids and we're gonna start drawing and we are told that you shouldn't copy and you shouldn't trace and you shouldn't use reference even some people even say that because it's like supposedly bad and you should do like everything on your own from imagination which is total bullshit um, but we are told that and oftentimes we are told that not because any of these things are actually wrong but because uh, a beginner doesn't really know how to utilize these tools fairly ouch um, I hurt myself <laughs> It hurt itself and it's confusing. Um, what was I saying now? <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's not because it's actually like wrong, but because beginners don't actually know the uh, line. They don't know the, for example, beginners don't understand the line between like copying and plagiarism or like stealing and copying. So it's easier to tell uh, a beginner don't copy instead of trying to explain a very delicate subject of how to copy without it being wrong or without it being illegal or ethnically 
sound at least, or ethnically wrong, at least. But unfortunately, in certain people, it can create this, uh, like, nagging feeling or this nagging voice at the back of our heads where even when we grow older and we actually understand, okay, why was it that people told us not to copy and why are you supposed to copy or why are you not supposed to copy? You know, we still somehow feel like we shouldn't do that and we don't really let go of that, like, purist uh, mindset that you have to be able to do everything on your own. For me, that was like an issue I had for a long time where I just felt like kind of crap because <laughs> I thought that I was supposed to like know and be able to draw any everything or anything without relying on any kinds of tools or relying without relying on a reference or you know without like copying which uh, was weird because as a kid I copied a lot and that teach me so much about drawing like I learned all of my fundamentals from copying because being a kid who's Finnish there was no art resources okay I couldn't go to internet and you know just find tons of tutorials on how to draw everything I learned about art I learned by myself by observing which I give myself credit to you did a good job good job um, but I, I basically learned everything by copying because I was observing my work and my references and I realized certain patterns. I was like, hey, I, I noticed that in every single thing, this thing happens. Like, there's tons of these patterns that I started to understand and it really like helped me to piece, you know, the rules of like works. Like, I understood basic uh, basics of anatomy just by copying because I was observing, right? And it teached me the most important things that I needed to know, like the, you know, foundations of art to uh, keep going from, from there. But at some point I, like, distanced myself from it and I started to think that it was like a bad thing. And I guess partly it's because, especially when you're a young artist, you usually get involved at some point with artist communities, which is something I did as well. And there's like a tons of trauma there about like, people calling each other out for supposedly copying them despite the fact that you know the idea is not even original and not even like interesting or you know whatever and you know oftentimes it's like kids calling out other kids and it's a stupid drama but there are times when unfortunately it's like adults calling out kids and sometimes it's like adults with like big audiences and then it becomes um, an actual issue where you have kids who basically get bullied um, by, you know, this artist for supposedly copying when they necessarily wasn't, weren't even copying in the first place. So it becomes a very um, unfortunate and the sort of, people don't want to step on onto those boundaries because they're afraid of possible backlash and that's kind of another issue is that there a lot of artists have this very very purist mindset of each other and of themselves and it can feel like bad if you feel like you disappoint someone when you draw something that's like uh, considered like when you if you use a reference for example well using reference is totally totally uh, normal and recommended and good for you and if someone is like gets by her because you use reference that's like their loss but you know there are some people who actually take quite a lot of pressure from it if they feel like they don't do everything uh, on their own and by themselves that they're somehow bad or inferior and I sort of had my I, I had sort of that for myself as well and I've been letting go of that ego a little bit at the time and I've been kind of utilizing a lot more tools that are available for me for example I've been doing a concept art for my comic uh, just for myself you know not for show or anything but just for a concept art and I've been doing this thing where I usually have an image or idea for more like a vision 
for uh, the kind of work that or the kind of setting that I, for example, want to have. So I go and find pictures that are usually closest to the thing that I was um, going for. And in the past, I would be like super uptight about it. Like, oh, you know, I had to be like morally sound. Nowadays, what I do is that when I do concept art, I just paint over the picture. <laughs> I was just like, I want to draw like, or I want to, I have this image in my mind of this like, park. So then I just go and find pictures of parks and I'm just like, hey, this is pretty close to what I want. I take the picture and I start painting over it. It's just like, uh, but in my park, I want here to have like a fountain. So I just paint it in and stuff like that. Because what's the point of like, if you have to do like hundreds of, you know, perhaps concept pieces and they're not for anybody else to you're not making money out of them you're not like being uh, dishonest about it you're just using it to save time uh, because you have to do a lot of these things then why would you not utilize the tools that you have especially when it's totally fair use uh, you can use a photo passing and things like that are totally uh, legit for example you can use things for personal use and for educational purposes for example and there are even some laws that go into you know pictures being transformative and like you being able to use other pictures to uh, as you know basis for your own art if it's transformative enough but that's kind of gray area so you know, even most people who know something or anything about copyright law, like that goes really into, you know, really into hazy territory, so. I wouldn't exactly use that as my defense. Hey, it's transformative, like, mm hmm But generally, if you can use um, copying and, you know, other, other works as, you know, way to study, then why would you not? Like, why make things harder for yourself when you can actually, like, study in a ways that actually makes you learn fast and is efficient? Why do things the hard way just for the sake of being pure? Now, I'm not saying that, hey, throw away all of your morality and, like, values and just, you know, steal everybody's aria and just make things out of that. Like, that's not a very good idea because there are... My friend actually put it very well, but there are things where social consequences are more important than the legal ones. Where essentially it is just because some things are legal doesn't mean that you should do them. Because, holy shit, I'm not sorry if you guys heard that, but someone really was burning rubber over there. Hope you don't, you know, hit a pole and die. Or at least kill somebody else. I hate when cars do that. Anyway. Uh, a friend of mine, again, uh, put it very well that, you know, sometimes um, social cons consequences are more important than the legal ones. And you should not, like, of course, steal and you shouldn't, like, if you make studies, just say that it's a study. That's all you need to do. Like, if you make, if you try to pass it off as your own work and you don't disclose that it's a study, of course people are gonna be iffy about it and they're gonna, like, feel like you were being dishonest and they're gonna be disappointed when they realize that, oh, you know, it wasn't actually, you know, just your own own, like, work. So if you say that, hey, this is meant for study, it's automatically, like, tells people that, okay, you probably had some other resources going on for you. And of course, you shouldn't like trace other people's art and, or you know, straight up copy, unless you again disclose that you are doing it for, uh, hopefully, to study and learn. But yeah, I've been personally letting go of of that uh, mindset that I have to do everything on my own, and you know, everything has to be perfect. Which has been nice, and I, I try to keep working on it. Um, yeah, I, I guess that should have. Been it. <laughs> I don't know. My, my thought ran out because now my cat came around again to mess with me, and you know he's been very distracting, and he's been very distracting for quite some time. So, 
but yeah, I, I guess I did say all that I wanted to say, hopefully, and, you know, hope that you know, uh, maybe this helped somebody a little bit, or probably didn't, but hey, you know, who knows? Anyway, the picture is almost ready, so bye-bye!